going on members of the Super Strain community and universe? Welcome back to another video. If this is your first time watching me. Make sure that you subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, and leave me a like and comment in the comment section below if you want to talk about anything that you see in this video. Now guys, if you missed my first Super Strain Boot Camp Lesson 1, you need to click off this video and go watch the first boot camp and then come back to this one, alright? Now that you guys did that, welcome back to Super Stream Boot Camp. This is lesson two, discussing Aegis this time, okay? What Aegis does what? Who should I build thing? And uh, what's a good team comp? What unit should I take up first to somebody else's team so that way I can ruin their whole strategy? You're gonna find out all those answers in this boot camp, okay? Now this boot camp, the purpose of this is to help you guys know what Aegis does everything, okay? I'm gonna be very brief very short. I want to make this video even longer than it needs to be, so I'm going to get straight to the point. Towards the end, I want to give you guys some examples of some, just some notable stuff of what you can do with some of these team cuts. So I'm telling you guys right now, a lot of people are overlooking a lot of strategies. There's a lot of strategies I don't even know that's probably hidden in here somewhere. Just by having all of this information right here all at once for you guys to see is going to be good. I spent all week making a tier maker. Now this is not a tier list, but it is a tier maker that I spent all week on. I wanted to give you guys some visuals because a lot of people don't know the character names. Some people might just know their faces, so I want to put the faces with their name up there and kind of just have them in the tiers because it makes it easier to understand. Easy for everybody to follow along and not get confused, okay? So with that being said, let's go ahead and get started with lesson two, agent discussion. So I put myself on the right side so that way you guys can see everything and we'll get right on into this. So we do this from top to bottom. So with the immortal units, uh, a notable would be Kira. Kira's immortality is triggered on command. So unlike all the other units here, she doesn't just trigger her immortality or revival ability upon death. She actually can do this right from the get go. She can do this with full HP. She reduces her HP to one and then just goes into immortality. And she can do this as long as the skill is up. So if you reduce her cooldown, she can actually go into infinite immortality until it's removed. Um, the only other notable here is Azate, would be his ring EX. His ring EX will remove debuffs, he will gain a turn immediately, and he does get some HP back. So that is the second version of Azate, the ring Azate. Both Kansukis have immortality. Um, Saquon can counter you if you crit him when he dies. Lee's a revival unit because a lot of people might be surprised why he's there. Um, Lee does have a revival ability if he has, I believe it's like 20% HP. If he survives with 20% HP from your attack, he's going to basically get a lot of his HP back. Alright, so let's talk about Oblivion. So, there's two things you need to be aware of about Oblivion, okay? If you use a unit that does damage with Oblivion, which I think for here, I think Tina and Mayor, they do damage, right? So if a unit is getting ready to die, if you try to hit them with Oblivion, and you're attacking them at the same time, you're going to mess it up, basically, okay? So if these units are getting ready to die and you use Mayor to do her attack, they will still come back to life. That is because the Oblivion effect happens after the damage is already done. What that means is, is that you have to make sure that you don't accidentally kill them before the Oblivion effect goes off. The only exception is Red Swan. Red Swan is the only unit that does Oblivion and the damage comes after. So if you use her Oblivion effect with Red Swan, then she is the only unit that can actually kill them and make sure they don't come out to life. So just be aware of that. The other notable here is Tina and Shingaeon. So both of these units can AOE a whole team. Tina can miss. Shingaeon is a guaranteed Oblivion attack if you match her skills. The only difference is, it's kind of a downside, it kind of sucks actually, is Shingaeon's Oblivion only lasts for one turn. Tina's Oblivion lasts for about three turns, I think. All right, so everybody else is pretty straightforward. Be mindful that they have to be in their right EX weapon, okay? So if you don't have a certain EX weapon, I'm not going to go over that in this video, but just keep in mind that these units can do these things based off their EX weapon, okay? Uh, some other side notes. Uh, let's talk about Revive at the bottom, okay? So the first unit there, which is going to be Shin. 
So she's probably the best one because she can actually revive a unit, one unit whenever she wants. And the second one, which is her passive ability, there's a second way that she can revive. If she is the last surviving unit, meaning that she is the last one to die on the team, she's going to resurrect the entire team. So that's very, very good. Her passive ability can revive, and then she can see her power to revive. All right, so moving on. All right, so this is going to be damage focused, all right? So let's talk about the invulnerable effect. So similar to how Shin Ha'il's revival ability works with the passive, being that if the entire team dies and she's the last one standing, they'll come back to life. Jian Yuga and Baek Ryong all have the exact same thing, where it's not the entire team though, but every time one unit dies from their team, they will become invincible for one turn. So, and Jian Yuga actually has a kit where he can't use his other skill until he does this. So it's kind of an interesting thing with him. Uh, damage reflection, of course, damage received is them taking more damage. Damage received minus basically is going to reduce the damage that you receive. Uh, this is going to be the new X, new EXG, by the way. I'm going to make very notes. There's only two units here. I mentioned that one. Um, Hasty, whenever she does her protected and guarded ability, it's going to be the same thing where she has a chance to reduce her damage. That's going to be on the second EX, by the way, not the first EX. Um, of course, uh, Hei Myung, damage up versus bosses. Whenever you face a boss, how do you know when you're facing a boss? You will see on your screen, it'll say boss under their name. You have a big health bar, and it'll say boss on it. That's how you know. So he's a very good unit to build because of that, by the way, because he does damage against bosses. All right, auto status up. What is auto status up? These units basically will have you start the match with a buff at the start of the match. So Veronica will buff your defense at the start. If you're using the second EX Hasiwu, she will buff your, she will give you the bigger buff. Johan can help you resist uh, status effects at the start of the match. Park Heat Jin gives you crit damage up. And then Hasty gives you the shield at the beginning of the turn, right? So. You can stop the match with a lot of buffs already active. There's a lot of team comps you can use with these teams, by the way. Um, so these are units. It's simple. Increased turn meter, decreased turn meter. Um, double turn units. So these are the units that get an extra turn, right? So Gian Yuga can get an extra turn on his last skill. Sando can get an extra turn when she kills a unit. Um, uh, Jane Su Chan has his last skill. Um, Agite can double turn himself on his glasses, Agite, I believe. He'll get another turn via his passive. Um, Boyan, who is a super slept on A unit, by the way. Um, whenever she crits with one of her skills, there's one skill where she can, uh, if she crits you, she'll get an extra turn. This is the easiest done in her Oka state. Uh, Tina automatically double turns himself when she transforms on her last skill. Man Jim Wu has a very NASA passive skill where he reduces his own cooldown and he will get another turn. Um, uh, GU will get a, another turn when he tries to uh, counter on his new EX, EX, uh, EX ability, I believe. Sorry about my word in there, guys. Uh, I don't use B units, but the Revenant Assassin can double turn herself with a speed buff. And then you got Kang Hanul, who's the only unit that can a double turn unit and ally. So you can use this unit to get an extra turn on any unit and whoever you want it to be. So while Mihu and Lim Hong Lim can reduce your cooldowns, Lim Hong Lim can reduce your cooldown by three on one unit. While Mihu's passive ability, anytime she gets a turn, will reduce her entire team's cooldown. And the rest of these units will just reduce um, their own cooldown, so they're kind of like selfish CD reducers. You should know what a semi-turn stagger is. So all your units, these are all your confusion, your silence, all the stuff that's considered a semi-turn stagger. Um, uh, some of the other stuff we're getting ready to talk about here, guys. So this is going to be important for those of you that wants to do the alliance raids. You know, they kind of require you to use... Hit a unit with attack down will make the boss take 50% more damage, right? So all that stuff, attack down, defense down, who can curse, all that's going to be important specifically for your alliance ways, all right? So these are all the units that can do all those things. 
Um, now let's see. What else do I want to make a note of? I like Tina for Curse because Tina, whether you, even if you don't transform, even her, her turn increase ability also has Curse attached to it on her normal mode. Her Gladia mode or whatever you call her transformation, she has a passive ability that's going to passively put the enemy into a curse effect. So, I mean, she will actively curse the hell out of her team. So, I like her. Um, uh, tap down with the special there. Fits down. You got all your poison users. Now, the thing about the Matt Scientist. Let me say this. The Matt Scientist is really good because the Matt Scientist has a chance to spread the poison from one unit to the other. So, I like to say, I don't use the B units, but he does have that in his kit. He can spread poison to other units, so be very, very careful when you face him. Um, of course, these are all the units that can bomb you, and yes, the bombs are stackable on this game. So you can bomb the hell out of somebody with a lot of bombs. Trust me, I'm sure that would hurt. I want to see that team combo. I might do a video on that in the challenge video, actually. Um, of course, you got burn. You got all units that can bleed. Keep in mind that there are some units that do do, do do more damage based on bleed. So like, I think Lilia actually has bleed in her own kit. Bon, um, uh, there's also the one guy, Yamaha, that does more damage based on bleed. So I mean, keep that in mind, these are important for your team comps. And then you got the units that can shock at the bottom. So when it comes to your technical damage, specifically buffs and debuffs, so uh, these are going to be pretty much doing extra damage to an enemy unit based off certain conditions, okay? So if a unit is stunned or frozen, basically immobilized, they will take what's called trample damage. Based on how many debuffs they have, they will take what's called punishment damage and destruction damage. The only difference between punishment and destruction, despite doing more damage based on how many debuffs they have, punishment will not remove those debuffs after you attack. Destruction will remove the debuffs when you attack them with it, okay? I'm not going to talk about steel buffs, it's pretty self-explanatory. All in damage. So, you will do more damage to a unit based off how many buffs you have up at one time. So, you have bigger, attack up, crit damage up, they're going to remove all those buffs. So, you will remove all the buffs and then do a big attack essentially. So you do more damage by removing all your buffs. So the more buffs that's removed, the more increased damage you'll deal. Um, Stare is gonna be the opposite. The more buffs that the enemy unit has, the more damage that they will take from Stare damage. So far, Mito is the only person that can use Stare right now in the game. Technical damage, physical. So any unit that can follow up, basically Kim Bachun, Cuckoo, they have a follow up attack where they will link or they're sending off a robot. The rest of these units will basically follow up from their own attacks. It's kind of like a self-follow up. Of course, you got counter units and some units can do what's called retribution like Saquon, where they do more damage based off how much damage you did to them. Um, a frenzy basically is gonna be, these are only two units that do it, but it's gonna be GU's new EX, by the way, that has Frenzy. Um, a Frenzy will basically increase their crit chance and the crit damage. Pierce, so this is gonna be how you ignore defense in this game. So essentially, if they put like a shield up, then you're gonna ignore 20% of their defense and still do attacks. So I can tell you right now, Marlene, I think all her attacks are like Pierce damage, I think. So she's really, really good for Pierce. Revenge. The more HP that is lost, the more damage they will deal. So I know Kang Suho and PvP, the more damage that is lost, the more his revenge is going to hurt. Veronica, the more HP that is lost, the more her fourth skill is going to do damage. So Critical. Critical is basically going to be a guaranteed crit. This is going to be no matter what that skill does, it is guaranteed to be crit damage every single time. So what equipment set should I make for Amboy Yang or Matsu or Sando? There's no reason not to go crit because they have a, a skill set that will allow them to crit. Now some units like Park Heat Jin and uh, Yang Kul, Yang Soul, I don't know how to say his last name. You might not want to go crit there, but I'm just saying they do have skills that haven't. Uh, I know Park Heat Jin has a fourth skill in her passive. Ying Song. Um, if you're stunned and, and he attacks you with his first skill, it is a guaranteed critical. So that's where his critical comes from. So, 
Strength damage is going to be increased. Uh, critical damage. Savage damage. So I love savage damage in this game. Savage damage is damage based off a unit's maximum HP up to a percentage, okay? So just think of this as this. The more HP that you have, the more it's going to hurt to a percentage. Uh, I know it doesn't make sense, but let's put it like this. An uh, easy to understand way. The new war boss. Now, savage damage is capped in the war boss by 1%, so it doesn't really do anything. But most of these skills are 500% maximum HP damage. So this is going to be really good for all-out mode. Um, event PvP specifically, I don't like regular PvP because everybody's HP is all over the place. It doesn't really do that much damage, honestly. But event PvP where it says set stats on everybody. Um, your bosses, the campaign mode. Savage damage is going to do more damage to all those hard-to-beat bosses that have a lot of tanky HP. They're going to take a lot of damage based off savage damage, okay? Alright, so one thing that we're going to do before we end this video is I want to give you guys a very quick demonstration showing you guys that everything that we talked about in this video, if you utilize it correctly, you're going to see the difference. It's going to be like night and day. It's such a big difference. Your tick house is going to be so much better. It's You're going to have so much more fun with this game now that I showed you how to really freaking play it and get your team cost together, okay? So let's do that now. Okay, so one of the things I wanted to show you guys here is I'm going to show you the auto status up. So just so you guys kind of know what I'm talking about, just give a little visual on that. So your auto status up agents are going to be... Uh, I believe we have Veronica, we have Ha Si Wu on her second EX. You have Johan with the effect resist. Then you got Park Hee Jin for crit damage up. And then you got, I believe I gave you guys Hasty on her second EX. So you're going to see when we start the match here, you should see all of these autos take effect immediately. So I know that was a lot of names, but as you can see right here, auto status up pretty much just says all your buffs. So again, we're getting the defense up from Veronica. We're getting the effect resist from uh, Johan. The crit damage up from uh, uh, Park Key Jin. We got Hasty's protect buff, which is this one right here. And then we got Ha Si Wu. So I mean, this is a, just an example of and how some of your buffs work with them taking effect right away. If you attack, I'm actually gonna replay this clip in slow motion so you guys can see. If you pay attention to this, you can kind of know that you're having effect going off. So you can have a lot of these up at one time. So just to give you guys an idea of how that works with the buff department taking effect at the very start. All right, guys, in this example, I'm going to show you guys how you can uh, use these two characters, Mihi Wu and Lim Han Lim, to reduce your CDs. So Mihi Wu is literally just her passive that's going to be actively reducing everybody's CDs. Uh, you don't really need both of these. I'm just putting both of these for this example. But Lim Ha Lim can uh, focus on one person specifically to reduce some of their CDs as well. So the three units I'm going to be showcasing this on is going to be using Agitae's first EX, which is his glasses. I'm going to show you how you can pretty much keep using Kira's Immortality. And then I'm just going to use the Ruka Shield as an example. So. And once this start, again, you guys just pay attention to the words that pop up. You should see CD reduce whenever uh, Wan Mihu takes a turn. So as you can see, just right there, we had everybody had the cooldown reduced. So that's going to reduce everybody's cooldowns. Of course, I haven't done anything yet. So this doesn't really matter. I'm not going to show you Lim Hum Limbs yet because she hasn't done anything yet. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to go into Kira's Immortality. <laughs> then we're going to use the Wuka Shield. <laughs> now Azure we're going to force him to transform. <laughs> Alright, again, take notice of uh, Wami who's cooldown reduced here. Okay, we just had everything reduced. Let's just go ahead and waste our turn real fast. Okay, now I want you guys to visually see this, so we're going to waste another turn of Lim Hong Lim. Okay, so you see right here that uh, Kira has two turns for this. Easiest way is you're going to see me use one of her skills, means that she has to wait another turn. But when Rami, whose passive goes off, I should be able to immediately go into immortality again. So again, she would need to normally wait another turn, but I should be able to go into immortality on the next one after Rami, who takes a turn. Kawuka's shield is three. We're going to go ahead and... Ooh, she might AoE here. I don't know. Okay, so Ajate has his third skill, which is a Savage Damage skill, right? But it's on a three-turn cooldown. So what we'll do... So Wami, who's going to automatically reduce all their CDs. So again, she reduced it again. Then we use Lim Hum Lim to easily make Ajate's last skill available for a savage damage, or we can reduce Kawuka's uh, CDs to use a shield again immediately. So that's just one thing we can do. And as you can see, cooldown reduced, but it's going to be by three. And as you can see, we can once again trigger her immortality. That way I can just keep bouncing off every other turn. <laughs> Something to look out for is the mic going back into as well. And now, I mean, I got I can use it on the next turn, but again, if I did Lim Hum Lim, I could have used the shield right away. I didn't really want her to AoE. That's fine. But as you can see, I can use Agitate's third or last skill. So any character that has a very long cooldown period, you can then use Lim Hum Lim to reduce their CDs. All right, we're going to take a look at destruction damage. I want to make sure I threw that in here. Like I said, I don't want to go over every single thing and make this a longer video than it really needs to be. But I did want to put this one in here just so you guys can see the difference. Uh, while me who has a skill, I'm going to start the match up. While me who has a skill, uh, destruction damage can miss targets. But even though it misses if it hits, Okay, so we got lucky, so I can't use Yak, because they're going at the end, but I got at least three units that's going to go before Wan Mihu here. So we're just going to hit these guys with a lot of uh, debuffs. And again, I need to use debuffs that doesn't do damage, so that way they don't die. So we got three debuffs there. So we got the freeze the defense down, so that's few buffs there and then we'll use the freeze okay so they got a lot of debuffs basically right I wish I could have used Jack but that's fine so again the destruction damage on one here is coming from this one now this now this does have a 60% chance on each target so I mean there's a 40% chance it misses but if it hits we'll see if this one hits or not See how much damage this does. Okay, so it did a lot of damage. So we're going to look at this exact same setup. I'm going to surrender the battle. So we're going to use that same as that move. Again, same setup. It's just they're not going to have any debuffs this time. Hopefully I hit the same amount of targets, but you're going to see the damage difference that destruction damage did. So as you can now, 
Now, just note that I didn't have, I didn't hit McMahon this time, but even then, you can see that the damage was much, much less. So that's just another thing you can do with destruction damage. All right, so similar to destruction damage, I want to use one of the physical ones as well. So again, we're gonna take a look at GN Yuga. So again, we're gonna, let's do this opposite way though, right? Let's take off the supports I was gonna use for this. And we're gonna use his all-in damage skill. And I guess the uh, example with type advantage, uh, we'll go for McMahon. Okay, and that's also another example. He just gained his turn. So if you guys remember that one as well. Uh, so, okay, so I was like, what, 324? So let's go ahead and look at all in damage when they're buffed. Just so you can see the damage difference when you do some of this stuff. So, okay, so he's got two auto buffs there. I'm going to hit him uh, with this skill. Okay, that's two more buffs. And then, and again, we're using McMahon as an example. Make sure they don't kill McMahon. Muff him up again. Okay, so he's got some buffs going on here, right? So now we're using the all-in damage on McMahon and see how much damage he does this time. Boom, just like that. And as you can see, he got rid of all his buffs. So again, this is this this stuff does change the game. This stuff does matter. All right, I'm going to show you a nasty little trick with some follow-up units. So uh, we are going. I'm just and I just got hasty in here to kind of protect Cuckoo from dying. I don't really have them too here. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and shield. And then we're going to set up Kim Bonchu's follow-up. And we'll wait for Cuckoo to go. Alright, so we're going to use Cuckoo's follow up. And then we'll just wait for her. Alright, so we're going to try to get a nice combo off. So let's see how this goes. <laughs> nice. So as you guys saw there, I did an attack with Kawuka, and then I had Kim Bon Chu's follow up, and then I had Kawuka's passive, which was a follow up. And then I had Cuckoo's follow up. So that's just one little thing you guys can be aware of. I mean, I know they're the only units that can do this, but in the future, just be careful with any further units that might do stuff like this. You can get a uh, four or five hits off of one target. So just want to kind of show that off and throw that in here. All right, guys, that's it. So I hope that example really helped you guys kind of just see the difference. So those damage numbers can get up there. If you set your team top up right correctly, even if you don't have the exact same team comp that I had of the examples just now, you can use half of the team comp. You can do so much in this game. All you need to do is just take your time, come up with a team comp that's good for you, and you can too come up with a crazy team comp and do some crazy damage like I just did. Anyway, guys, that's going to wrap it up for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I will see you guys in the next video. Have yourselves a good day.